All right, back with Keith. Conversations with Keith. Uh, continuing talking to candidates in this uh, political season. We have Brian McCann here today. He's 1995 graduate of Pendleton County High School, um, and, and just another can another person who we have seen graduate from Pendleton County High School and want to stay, live, and become a leader in this community. It's so thrilling um, as former teachers that we see our kids, our uh, former students doing all those things. Absolutely. Um, so I, I was talking to him earlier, um, but I want you all to know and give him a chance from when you graduated in 1995. Tell us your journey from there to this seat right now. Well, it's been a long journey, uh, Keith. Uh, at 95, I graduated. I joined the military in 97, had some issues going on with that, so I came back home, um, injury. That injury kind of uh, put me on the other side of things, Keith, for quite a while. Uh, Eleven years uh, after the injury, I had drug issues. It's like everything's going on in our community now. Uh, my daughter was born back in uh, 2005, and she uh, she turned my life around. Cool. Um, I really, I a lot of people say don't bring that up, but you know what, Keith? That's actually what got me to where I am today. Um, everything that I've been through in my life. Um, has taught me, but 11 years, 11 years of hardcore, just everything that people's going through today. And uh, I've been cleaned up 12 years. Um, I went back to school. Well, I was gonna run for sheriff last election. And in the last election, I, I realized I had no education at all. Search and rescue, fire department stuff. Yes, I've got education, a lot of it, but nothing at all. So I decided to hang that idea up on the shelf and. I went back to school, got my associate's degree in criminal justice. From where? Uh, Beckville College. Beckville, okay. Yeah, I'm working on my bachelor's program right now with Beckville as well. Um, I worked at the Grant County Jail, and I enjoyed my job. Uh, a lot of what I do is mental but health. Let me stop you right there real quick and yeah. say this. Grant County Jail is not closing. Not closing. Fox News <laughs> had uh, updated their computer yes. program yeah, and an old story from several years ago when it was discussed. 2016. Somehow the computer released that on the internet and sent it out and so the story about Grant County Jail closing, fake news. Absolutely. So go ahead. Anyway, so yeah, what I do is mental health and law. Um, I knew that mental health was going to rely into or go into the drug aspect of future years. So I worked mental health for four and a half years, and then this past January I got up to Grant County Jail to get more of the the aspect of criminals, you know. Yeah. And I also do, you know, a lot of things around Kentucky as far as interviews with people, and it's been really challenging, but you learn so much about why people do what they do. A lot of people don't understand that when it comes to drug addiction, people are hooked on drugs, but the problem is a lot of people suffer from depression. Okay. They suffer from mental health issues that that has to be corrected for them to get clean. Mm -hmm. And it, it's a hard thing for people to understand. Um, if you look at statistics and you look at depression, mental health issues, and you look at drug addiction, they're the same. Mm -hmm. So in order to get somebody cleaned up and straightened up in the town, you have to really look at the individual you're looking at and see what can I do for this person. Okay. Well, Hilton County, this is the reason I'm doing what I'm doing, because I understand the aspect of being addicted. I mean, it was basically prescription drugs, but at the same time, it was an addiction. Uh -huh. I overcame that. I tried to help people with that. I had sponsored people. I had three. And the well, two of them passed away of an overdose in one weekend. I, I about lost my mind, really did. And, uh, I decided to get out of that, figure out a way to help these people, and this is where it lies. Well, let me ask you a couple questions about that. Yeah. When you say, because I've heard that term before about sponsoring someone, yeah. I have no clue what that means in that regard. What, okay. what does that mean, sponsoring somebody? Well, you've got AA and A and all that. Once someone gets clean, they have time under, their, under the belt. They try to help other individuals. Okay. So that's what they, that's sponsored for someone that's having an issue. To help them get through it. So you're there for them as a support, to talk to them, to Absolutely. encourage them. Yes. I, I'm assuming they, they can almost call you 24-7? Absolutely, yeah. yeah. And that weekend I got a call that went from the individuals, the mom. Gotcha. And, you know, it hurts, Keith. But we got so many people in this community right now that are hooked on something. 
whether it be prescription medicines like what I did, never touched heroin or anything like that. But I have seen so many overdoses in this county, and it's sad. The, the future of our county are the children that's being raised up by mom and dad doing what they're doing. Mm -hmm. So what's the child going to do when they get older? Yeah. Okay. History repeats itself. you got to break that chain of that cycle. Um, the big thing that I'm going towards is anything, if I get elected, anything that you've done prior to me being elected is a fresh start. But from that point on, you have one chance with me. Mm -hmm. I will help you get into a rehab, whatever. If you do a crime, you still have to, by law, do what you have to do. But um, when it comes to getting that person taken care of, try to get them some help, I'm all for that. Okay. I will try out. I've been all over Kentucky, a few places in Ohio. There are a lot of places that are filling up. Of course, it's an epidemic at this point. But and you're talking about when you say places, you're talking about rehab rehab centers. centers yes. Okay. Yes. So I will try to get them help. But the one thing I want to make very well, very well known, is that if you're doing drugs, I will help you. If you're dealing drugs, this is your one and only warning to get out of help count. Because I will be coming for you, and the team that I've got together at this point, they're very good at what they do. And, and I think that's that's well said, and I think that's a position that we, we've we held here at the Outlook on how we're covering um, stories. If you're dealing drugs, we want you, or I'm sorry, if you're doing drugs, yes. we want you to get help, and yes. we want you to have a better life. And it helps the community if you do that. Yes. Absolutely. And if you're dealing drugs and you're one of the problems, you're done. we want to put you on the front page and let people Absolutely. know that you're dealing drugs and we don't want you Absolutely. to, if you want to continue that, we want you to leave our community. Absolutely. Uh, we don't want you here. Absolutely. And, and we're not going to, we're not going to enable people by hiding those stories anymore. Right. Because I don't want we, don't, we, we don't want that drug dealers. Nope. Absolutely. Uh, but we want people that are addicted to get help. Well, you're not going to get the people addicted. To help it till you get that stuff out of here too. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's it, you do one for the other. It's got to be done. So now you talked about getting them help in rehab center. Anytime those things occur, there's always a cost. Absolutely. So what what kind of program are you talking about? Is, is there programs you know that would pay for that? Are you expecting their insurance? How, how does that cost of getting them help go handle? There's many ways of doing it. Um, a lot there's a lot of programs that they can just walk. Through. Yeah. Now of course if they have insurance that's is covered yeah. completely. But there are many resources out there that people are. Mm -hmm. I just talked to the judge a little bit ago and uh, he talked about the same thing. Gotcha. So yes, it, it's not a it, do it overnight situation. It's one of the things to where it's been going on for so long, it's going to take a little while to do it. Yeah. Now keep um, in mind, you know, if I get elected in, it's the beginning of, of my uh, four years, but I'm walking right into the tax season. As sheriff, I have to make sure this is done. So, if I did the first six months, I plan on uh, it's going to be rough because I have that's what you know. So, you're two months into the job, and you're going out collecting delinquent yeah. taxes on people. That's right. What a way to walk it. Yeah. But you know, I had John Steele here earlier, and we were talking about his first year. He got appointed as PBA. Yeah. Tax bills come out first, October 1st. <laughs> He's working Wolfest Gate oh. with the Lions Club. Everybody's walking in, and he, they just got a you know tax bill from him in the mail two days ago. Uh, and he's seeing all these people come by. Oh, I thought that's just hilarious. Uh, <laughs> and the thing about it is, as a sheriff's position, it is basically for your taxes. I mean, it's, it's to make sure that that job gets done. That's what I want to do. Mm -hmm. That's why the person that I got coming in, very very good at what he does. He's worked drug task force. Gotcha. He's going to be running some major operations out here in Pendleton County because it's already in play. I'm just ready to get it done. Now I got to give up first. One of the questions we are asking each of the candidates is: Are you in a position that you want to to say who your assistant, your dep chief deputy, whatever the term is, the person you're talking about, yeah. the staff that you want to bring in? Well, I don't mind that depth because um, I'd love people looking up Liam McCarthy. He is uh, originally Lee, Liam, 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 Liam. Yes. Okay. He's originally from California. He, uh, California State, State, not California, yeah, Kentucky. Correct. But uh, he's got mega experience. So this, the thing they are having up here on the 18th at the high school in October, he will be there so people can meet. Okay. Meet the candidate? Yes. Okay. Yes. So he'll be there and 
everybody gets a chance to see him do and talk to him, ask him questions about okay. Because so he's gonna be as a sheriff's naked guy, get the taxes done. Yeah. If I'm busy doing that, I need somebody else. Absolutely. And he he definitely has the experience. Okay. Well let, let me ask you, going back to you, you had mentioned that you've traveled around the state. You mentioned that you're uh, off camera, that you're on the way to the high school talk up there. Yeah. What are those kind of things that you're doing there? As far as you're giving speeches, talking to kids? I'm all over. Um, what I do, as far as traveling all over, I'm looking at mental health, drug issues, what's going on outside this county, what kind of drugs is going on in southern Kentucky, uh, middle Ohio, what's going on there because have you ever looked at statistics on how drugs are transferred? No. What happens is if there's a new drug down in, let's say, Tennessee, in about a year or two, it migrates north. Okay. So you've got to be ahead of that, figure out what's going on before you can mm -hmm. get investigations going. So I mean, everything's different, but you got to get stay on everything. You can't just stay in the county and think you're going to do everything right here. Gotcha. You have to get out. You have to talk. I mean, I admit great people's people, excuse me. <laughs> but FBI, DEA, I mean, being in the school has really helped me along the way. The gentleman that, like I was telling you about, he ran a drug task force, and he knows his business. He knows yeah. what's going on. I've Does got, he live in Pendleton County now? He lives on uh, Boone County. Right oh, okay. Now. Boone County, yeah. okay. And you know, I've had a lot of people, I've been out talking, I'm trying to hit every door, every door in Pendleton County, and let me tell you, that's a challenge. <laughs> you know, I'm the kind of person I'd rather go to your door and hand you a flyer and have, you know, talk with you. Mm -hmm. I talked to the gentleman last night for two and a half hours. Wow. So we, I mean, that's what I want to do. You can set signs out all day long, but the people don't really know who you are. Mm -hmm. So you get out there and talk to them, and they give you input. You give them input, what did you want to do, and it goes along with it. Okay. People get to actually meet and understand. Let's talk about your degree. Kind of what, what kind of things um, um, in that degree did you study? Um, things that you've gone through that, that you have experience on? Um, any any training or uh, workshops or anything you attended yes. that, that gives you uh, qualification for this position beyond backfill? Right. This is only a one hour interview, correct? I, <laughs> this interview is as long as we talk. All right. Well, <laughs> when I started in, like I said, I was going to run for sheriff. I think like two weeks, three weeks later, I decided to go talk to them and uh, get things going. But since then, I have got interrogation cer mm -hmm. certifications, uh, master firearm certifications. I mean, where is this from? What, what it's from Beckville. From Beckville, okay. Yeah, they got the fast okay. lab, which is firearms training. But, okay. Yeah, uh, I mean, the classes I take, well, for example, I'm going from a bachelor's here right now. Uh -huh. And I'm taking, I don't understand this, but uh, anatomy and physiology. Why does criminal justice students need that? Well, I asked that question, and if you roll up on a saint, especially with the drugs, as bad as they are, and you see certain things of the body, you need to know to get back, get away from them. So, okay. I mean, it also helps the communication that medics and everything have. You're trying to do your investigation, they're trying to do this, and you understand the terminology. Mm -hmm. So you can understand what they're saying, so it helps you with the investigation as well. So, yeah, it, it's a hard course, believe me. Oh, my gosh. My son's in it right now for the um, PE teacher at NKU. It, yeah, it I, is I know, yeah. But you know what? You don't need to have to have education to be a sheriff. You don't. I mean, I think a lot of people were really shocked, and I see them on Facebook, that you don't have to have no education. Well, I felt that you needed the education. Mm -hmm. If you're going to do the job, you need to know what you're doing. So that's what got me back to school. So what you're saying is the eligibility requirements doesn't require you no. to need education, but you felt like you needed training specifically for certain areas right. of that career, and that's why you went to back to them. Correct. And I mean, you can be a deputy, you can be an officer for multiple years, go through Eastern, get your, uh, and I haven't got that yet, and get your uh, academy experience. But being in school, what they learned in two weeks I'm learning for three months, so you do, it's a whole, whole broad thing of the yeah. class. You know, it's not just here it is. This is what this is what this is, and they go on something. Yeah. And sometimes I wish it would be like that. <laughs> but you know, being in school, getting the education, it teaches you business parts. It teaches you, of course, computer skills, which, well, we'll leave that one. <laughs> but um, and then of course the law too. You know, 
laws, courts, uh, how to write affidavits. Uh, I mean, it, it really gets into everything. But yeah, like I said, to be a sheriff, you can you can be a farmer here and decide one day I'm done with this and mm -hmm. go run for sheriff. Yeah. And I think that's scary. I, I yeah. mean, it is really scary. Absolutely. Well, let me, let me ask you a question. Um, so beyond the aspect of um, getting help for the drug users, one of the questions we wanted to talk about is what is your vision, what is your plan um, with your um, staff to battle these issues that's going on with drugs? You know, one of the points that, that um, I've been talking about is in dealing with Judge Fields in the fiscal court and Bill Mitchell. This all actually is an economic development issue, too, Absolutely. because the local businesses are talking about they can't get workers and keep them because they can't pass a drug test. Or their drug use call, um, um, leads to them calling in sick, um, not showing up on time, having to leave early, Absolutely. which then ends up with the employees not there. So it's, you know, beyond the personal issue, beyond the criminal issue, it's an economic issue that's holding our county back. Absolutely. I'm glad you brought that up because that was one of the things I did. You know, I was in the mental health work four and a half years. After I got out of that, before I got into the jail, I wanted to see how bad it was. Mm -hmm. So I went to a DECO services. I went to do oh, what's a right? DECO service. What is DECO? It's a temporary service. Oh, okay. But I wanted, I wanted to get out there and just gotcha. kind of see how bad it was in these places. Yeah. Uh, three places. I'm not going to mention any names, but they are very good companies. Yeah. They're allowing so much drug use because they can't keep it. That's it's it's scary. Yeah. I mean it really is that companies will allow people overlook certain things because they can't keep people and they're bringing people into work that are on drugs. Yeah. I mean that it's scary that if that this is where we're at at this point in time. Because years ago you did drug, you lost your job. Mm -hmm. Now they have to. They don't have that choice. Yeah. To keep people or to have people, if they're there, they're doing something. And they, and they have to keep them because the economy, they're so low unemployment. Yeah, absolutely. There's just not other employees absolutely. to choose from. Yeah. So it's either have nobody or, or have put up with this. Yes. Or hope that there's somebody that shows up if you decide you're not going to go uh, go with these grounds. Right. Well, I won't mention no names of companies because I won't do that to nobody. But, you know, it, like I said, it's three really good companies. And it, it, does, it just blows my mind. So like, what's your plan? My plan is, <clears throat> well, <clears throat> there's a lot of things I can't describe at this point in time. Yeah. Because, you know, I want to make sure that it gets done correctly. Yeah. Okay. Well, and we don't want to, you don't want to necessarily give all aspects where the criminals know what is coming up. Correct. Uh, but in generalities, in specifics where you can go, what, what would be your plan? First off, I think we need to have more things for the kids. This is a small county. Kids are going to be kids. They're going to do silly things. They always do. But you got to start with the children. you got to get the like the D.A.R.E. program. What happened to that? I mean, just fizzled out. Hey, that's, <coughs> that's on the question line uh, down the list. We'll, we got, we'll go ahead and come <laughs> we'll get back to that. Right. Well, I mean, that's one of the biggest things. you got to start with children. I mean, when kids see their mom and dad's doing it, you know, what do you do? I mean, I went through the Narcan class we had down here not too long ago, and uh, I was kind of iffy on the Narcan. And the gentleman that was teaching the class said that, I think it was a COVID thing, but they had uh, two children that were overdosed. They Narcan and brought wow. them back. What happened was mom and dad was doing drugs that night. Kids were in bed. They went to bed, left the spoon out. Kids went to cereal the next morning, picked the spoon up, fixed them both cereal, wow. killed a boat. Wow. But they brought them back. So, you know, Narcan, everybody's like, well, no, that shouldn't be, no, no. But the thing about it is, in that situation, two children got brought back. Now, yes, yeah. mom and dad went to jail. But I, I just, and officers, like we have so many different, uh, like fentanyl and everything like uh, out there right now. An officer grows up on a scene, he gets it on, mm -hmm. he gets brought back. So I carry four doses of Narcan, and that's the reasoning for why. Okay. So, but with, with that being said, I don't understand, and it's not in my play, but I don't understand why the U.S. government is handing out Narcan and the 
It's enabling. Yeah. I mean, that's a whole other subject, right? Well, so. you know, actually, I, I had a conversation last night, and I'm not a proponent of the needle exchange program. I am not. Um, but that said, I, I will concede this point in that a gentleman who I respect is that he would tell me the truth yeah. um, was telling a story. He had talked to one of his constituents who had back surgery several years ago before the needle exchange program. And in the process of having that recovery, he had to do a lot of walking. And he had a route, and he would say he would see 30, 40 needles along his route. Well, recently, he's had another issue. He's had to get back into walking. He's doing the same route. Now there's a needle exchange program. He said he'll see two or three needles. So the needles are getting turned in to the health department for exchange, which, ugh. But at the same time, they're not laying all over the city. So I'll concede that they're getting them off the streets, but boy, that's a hard issue. It is a very hard issue. Because here's the thing. If there is, there's residue mm -hmm. in the needle, right? Mm -hmm. My they, understanding there is. Yes. The people that are using them are carrying it back to the health department. Mm -hmm. There's drugs in the car. There's drugs with the person. What do we do, just walk away? Like I said, if I catch you, I'm going to give you help. Yeah. I don't want you to make it there. I want to get you the help before you get more needles. Yeah. I mean, it. people go both ways on this, Keith. And like I said, it's to, I'm going out there to get these people off these drugs. I, I'm living proof right here mm -hmm. that, yes, I did this many years ago. But from that point when I finally brought my knees and started praying, from that point in time, all I'm trying to do is help. Gotcha. You can't help people if they don't want it, first of all. Very true. If you're giving them needles, giving them Narcan, to me, I, mean, I don't want to see anybody pass away. I don't. I mean, that. I, mean, I went through things like that. Not Narcan or anything, but I understand it to a certain degree. But you need to get them away from it. Not get a needle to say, here's some Narcan to have a good night. Yeah. I understand. If you're doing that, you're enabling. You're never going to stop it. Yeah. So, I mean, I don't want to see people pass away. I don't want to see people overdose. I want to see people get help. Mm -hmm. But in certain things, if you're allowing this, what are you doing? It's an yeah. So you talked about the, the gentleman who's going to help you, Liam, Liam. Uh, who's a task, drug task force yes, experience. So he'll be involved in that aspect. Of I know. It. Yes. Talked about Definitely. programs for the kids. Yes. Um, and you talked about giving, getting the users help. Any other part of your uh, your plan to help combat um, drugs in the county? The one thing that I want everyone to know, if you're dealing drugs in this county, mm -hmm. this is your one on one. Okay. It's done. I'll be coming at you with everything I have. Gotcha. All right, another uh, issue that's been a hot button topic for over the last six months is school resource officers. Yes. Um, you yes. know, after the Parkland shooting in Florida, back I think it was in February, yeah. uh, school board had a presentation in April um, about arming staff as well as uh, some, you know, strengthening their target, their, their schools and um, school resource officers. Um, the former superintendent, Anthony Strong, had uh, found some funding to hire a second school resource officer mm -hmm. throughout the year. That led to an agreement between the, sheriff's, the present sheriff's department, uh, fiscal court, and school district that they have two uh, school resource officers of this year. Yep. So where do you stand on the importance of the school system having a school resource officer as it relates to the Sheriff's Department? Well, first off, let's back up a little bit because superintendent of school, there's money, money out there funded by the schools to take care of this. Mm -hmm. They can hire an officer that don't have to be deputies. And, and that money is kind of new money because it, it's, is. it wasn't there three or four or five years ago. Yes. But federal and state governments, yep. seeing this issue, has opened up this funding yes. recently. Absolutely. I, I agree with having someone there. But I also, Pendleton County, we got very few deputies. Mm -hmm. I mean, we, we need a lot more. Me being in this position, can I say, well, we're going to get two or three more. Absolutely not. I can't say that. That would be nothing but lies. But you can but, say that that's your goal. Well, that yeah. you would want to in, the, in your staff. Absolutely, I do. I do want that. Uh -huh. But the thing about it is, we have what we have. Yeah. But to have a deputy 
at a school, yeah, you can't take them away. That's what they're doing. Mm -hmm. You got an accident down here. That needs to be taken care of by an officer. They can't leave. Yeah. Well, it's up to the sheriff, of yeah. course. But then you're taken away from the school. I think in due time, and due process, we will be able to have the schools taken care of by their own placing. That's what I would like to see. So, um, so as some of the other districts in the state have done, um, creating their own police department. Absolutely. And running it through that, where they're overseeing that. Yes. Okay. And that, and here's the thing, and if the Sheriff's Department does eventually back out of that, I think anybody who's working in the schools need to have a pain that done. I mean, the thing about it is, is if you you're, you're talking about a school resource officer. Yes, yes. Okay, you can have the presence of an officer at the school. Mm -hmm. A little intimidating, for, especially for young ones. But to have a canine running through the schools, checking the lockers, that's what we need done. That's not being done right now. Mm -hmm. The thing about it is, everybody says, well, it's so hard to get a canine trained this and that. I've got six dogs donated right now if I get elected. And I've got a gentleman that lives in Pendleton County able to train these dogs with the handle. So they would be trained to um, sniff out drugs, drugs. and explosives. Drugs and explosives. Yeah. Okay. All right. I, I uh, shared a story. I, I love the show Live PD. <laughs> it's on Friday, Saturday night. Yeah. And they cracked me up because the sheriff, the officers will be there with the taser, with their weapons pulled, and, and they'll be fine. They'll be hiding. And then the sheriff will start yelling, I'm sending in the dog, I'm sending in uh, the dog, and Mike, they're going, don't send the dog, I get yeah. my it's a, it, You threaten them with that dog, they're ready to give up, and lay down the ground, okay, take me, just get that dog away from me. You know, it's kind of funny, because it's kind of like corrections where I work now. You can sit there, old Baker back and forth, you pull the taser, I'm done, I'm done. <laughs> you know, it's, just, it's the same, yeah. same concept. Yeah. But, you know, a dog is very, very smart. Um, um, yes. I mean, I'm a search and rescue, I deal with teams dog keeps all the time and them dogs are just unbelievable but to have well, we can't have a person in there looking at every locker that's mm -hmm. that's not gonna happen yeah but to have a dog to go walk through if you pick up on something that's preventive man mm -hmm. you prevent things from happening you don't you're not there when it's happened yeah you try to prevent it. so that's what I'd like to see and if not I mean if they can't get that done that fine I can try to help everything any way I can, but if they can't, then the sheriff's department still needs to have a canine. Gotcha. I mean, if we roll up on a car, I don't know if you watch that TV, you might know that show. You roll up on a car and you know there's possible drugs. Mm -hmm. You ask to search that car and they tell you no. That's the right, my constitutional right. Mm -hmm. You can tell them no. So now you gotta get a search warrant. Mm -hmm. You pull on a dog, the dog sniffs, it gives them probable cause. Well, that's so now right. they can search. So, but the dog is on the outside, so there's no no penetration. No, no, yeah, they're, you're not uh, violating their constitutional Absolutely. rights of search Absolutely. because you've not gone in there. But the dog, the dog hits on. It's trained and certified in yep. wow drugs. Absolutely, yeah, that's interesting. Um, another issue with the school, well, actually two more. Um, we'll let you go ahead and talk about. It. You mentioned the Dare program earlier. Yeah. Um, what's your status on those type of programs for kids? Obviously, you've already said that you're supportive of that. But what would you be your vision of a program working with kids? I know the D.A.R.E. program went away kind of yeah, because of funding. Yeah. Well, here's the thing. Pendleton County is a small county. I don't have a lot of resources like uh, Mike the Skate Park. When I put that in, it was a great idea, but it fizzled out. Mm -hmm. Then you've got bad company that comes in. You have to have things for these kids to do. If you don't, you, if you don't have things for these children to do, they're going to find something to get into. Mm -hmm. If you get out there, I mean, churches open doors, they have a basketball court, let them play, have competitions, have a, you know, just have a good time. And it, I'm going to touch on that too. There was a family police officer not too long ago. I was sitting at the house and I heard, you know, kind of holler and stuff going, I see police crews are not there forever. I'm like, what the heck's going on? I walk around the corner. And that officer's out there playing basketball with these kids. Hey, we ran that picture in the paper. Exactly. Yeah. I had it on my phone. Too. <laughs> but the thing about it is that that's what I want deputies to do. Police officers today, and I, I, just speaking from other people tell me, I haven't been on the streets as far as patrol. I like that. I work in the jail and I got the education. But what I can tell, police officers just get burned out. I mean, they... 
you try to run the same person through the justice system, they've done drugs, they get burnt out. So what's that do to the officer? That officer just like, whatever. You know? And you can't blame them. Mm -hmm. But you have to, you got to be strong. If I have a deputy and I can see that he's just flat burnt out, he needs to take a vacation. That's right. I want people that are strong headset to do this job. I don't want people to overstep any boundaries. Mm -hmm. For example, somebody was asking me a while back, well, how do you feel about, you know, your family? If you pulled over somebody in your family, I said, I don't care if my mother is 185 and a 45, I'm giving her a ticket. You know, I mean, that's all there is to it. When you put on the uniform, you are putting on that uniform to enforce the law and penalty count. And that better be done. Now, come Thanksgiving, you may not be getting them second serving. Well, I may not, but, <laughs> but yeah. Um, but no, the children need something to do. Gotcha. you got to get them out there. I can take some of the worst children. I can say the worst, but, you know, kids that get into bad things. I can bring them to my house and ask them to wash my car, and I bet you they'll do it. Because it gives them something to do. Yeah. If they don't have things to do, they're going to be getting it. Kids will be kids. They're going to get into stuff. But they're, there's programs out there. I know that a lot of people in city council, they've been trying to work towards that, but it needs to be throughout the county. I just found it. But uh, the children, they need to know officers are there for them. They and they don't want anybody that sees the news they're like this officer's all this murder and it's all bad. Mm -hmm. Officers need to get out. Just talk to kids. Don't put on a uniform and let the children be scared of you. Gotcha. You need to get out there. But yeah, the programs, I mean they're there's a bunch of programs out there, but the main thing is the deputies that are working for me need to be out there and are intertwined with the youth. At the schools, we need to have programs set up. Um, in due time, we can figure out what would work for Pendleton County, but right now, you know, there's, there's a lot. Now, one of the other issues that came up in the school board meeting was about arming staff and going through a program uh, that would allow, to tr that would approve and train teachers with the Sheriff's Department's cooperation in arming staff and keeping them anonymous on who that is. What, what's your stance on, on the staff trained by your department, your office, um, and approved by your office being armed? Well, that's a trick to say. Um, the that's why you get elected, you'll get paid the big bucks to handle these tricky things. You know what, you know, <laughs> in the money situation, you know, honestly, I don't even care what I get paid. I I'm here to do, do a job. <laughs> yeah. I'm just there to do a job. I don't care about the pay. I mean, yeah. people like you, that's not, that's not true. <laughs> yes, it is true. Yeah. I mean, I, I'm not going into this for the pay. I'm not going into this for having a uniform on. I'm in it to try to get Pendleton County back the way it used to be. Gotcha. But Army team, Army, Army staff. staff. Well, I I don't really want to comment on that at this time because on the fourth of next month I'm going to a rally up in uh, Beachwood, I believe it is, where they're doing a mass shooting mm -hmm. in a school. At that okay. point, and at that point, so it's a simulation. It is. That's one of the biggest ones around. So it's going to be done. I'm going to be there. And at that point in time, the question you just asked would be, I'd be better to handle that, I guess. Gotcha. But so you just want to kind of get some more information to yeah it before uh, you come to a, a, a position on it. Absolute. Here's the thing. Back in the day, I did private security when I was armed. But we worked bars and stuff as well. I would never care because every fight thing they had in there, of course, a knife or you know beer bottle, of course. Yeah. But there's never firearms. But if I walk in there with a firearm on my side, I've just introduced the firearm to what might happen. Yeah. So sometimes you got to sit back and think: Is it better for me to have a firearm, or is it better for me not to have that? So it's a very tricky subject, but I chose not to have a firearm because I, if I go in there and it's just a regular fight, but I got a firearm on my side, can that person get that away from me? Well, possibly, I don't know. So 
I'm going to be a very flat guy. <laughs> but at the same time, if it goes gets away from me, now I've introduced the firearm into a regular fight situation. Yeah. So, and if you are going to do that, you you have to have that person truly trained. Gotcha. And it's yeah, not, not just that. not just a concealment class. You have to have that person trained. Yeah. Like my master certification. How somebody comes behind me, you got to know how to handle that person behind you that's trying to get your firearm. Mm -hmm. If they can go through that, pass that, and I guess we'll see. But I can see that scenario yeah. a little bit. But they they need to be trained. Well, I just I here agree. you go. You're a good candidate for this. Here's your gun. Apparently, no. And, and there might be people who want to carry the gun who don't need to be carrying the gun because they're not the temperament. They're not the person that would make right. good choices with that. So it's not just about a teacher wants to carry a gun and goes through some classes and gets it. Right. They may not be a good person to handle. And, so. and it's also the situation is that person, and this is with officers too, mm -hmm. all over the United States, if the scenario happens, that you, you have a child in the school, it's got a gun, and coming at you, fired weapon. Mm -hmm. Hot weapon, hot scenario. Are, are you able to pull that trigger? Yeah. I, I've shared before, and, and of course we did a story on it uh, back in June when they had the simulation at the high school. Yeah. And they allowed me to go through it. And there were a couple scenarios that my teacher training, I relate, I, I went back on that. I walked in, um, in the simulation, me and another um, law enforcement agency was going down the hallway. He was in front of me. Mm -hmm. Well, as he came around a corner, he got shot. So I come around the same corner, he's laying on the ground, and the gunman's got a gun pointed at the back of the head of a student kneeling in the hallway. Yep. My first reaction is de-escalation as a teacher, and I say something to him, and he takes the shot and kills that student. Yep. Where a law enforcement agent, while they have de-escalation, they've already seen one person shot, they, they would have taken the shot possibly immediately and say, but my teacher training got in the way of me making the best decision and that, and I put it in the article, you know, I would have known that student. Yeah. And to know that my inaction cost that student their life would have been a hard thing for me. And I'm not opposing harming teachers. Yeah. Um, I just think it has to be a special person and yeah, absolutely. an unbelievable amount of training um, just to get them to that point. I mean, you got you got teachers out there right now. I know one at the middle school that went through the military. He's very well trained. But the problem is, and it, just like you said, this is a small county. If I get sheriff, I have a daughter that's in middle school. Mm -hmm. We go to an active shooter at the middle school. What's my mindset going to be if somebody has my daughter? Oh, you're going to okay. shoot that person. I need to step, <laughs> I need to step away from that. Because yeah. I'm not literally going to be in the right mind to take care of that situation. I mean... Uh, unless you're the first responder oh, yeah. and you're the only one there, then you have to... But, but yeah, I mean, I, people always say, what if you know the shooter? Well, I'm, I'm sorry, if they've already shot somebody and, and they're pointing a gun, and I, I, I don't think, with me, I would care as much there as I would about the one who my inaction right. that was innocent. And that's one of the main things you go through when you go through, through your firearms training. I went through a lot. But we had scenarios set up that um, a hostage took his wife. They go going through domestic issues, the divorce. The gentleman had a gun to the wife's head. He would pull the gun away and he'd bring the gun back. Mm -hmm. He had then shot one person. So we did a double shot. We broke the glass, fired the shot, took the gentleman down. And of course, anytime you do that, you have to you have to tell why you did that. Mm -hmm. The fact of it is, he's already shot one person, like you yeah. said. But and he, and he's getting, he was going to kill the wife, but you took a shot, eliminated the target, no, took the care of it, stuck. But the problem is, in small counties, everybody knows everybody. Mm -hmm. So if you know the person that's shooting, like you said, he was a teacher, that you work with this person, you know the person's issues, it's going to be hard for you to pull that trigger. Without my, without the situation I was in where I tried to talk him down. Right. 
and, and that caused the death of the young lady because I know I'm, I'm going to try to want to save both of them. Exactly. And in my case, it saved neither of them. In that case, that's what I'm saying. If, yeah. Are you going to be able to make that shot? That goes with, that goes with law enforcement too. Yeah. Just because you put on a patch and you carry a gun, don't mean you want to go out there and shoot somebody. That's true. Very true. I mean, but society's getting worse. Mm -hmm. Children are bringing guns, knives. It, that scenario could very well happen here in the camera. And it almost did a while back. Yeah. So you have to be able to take that shot. And once you take that shot, that's going to go with you for the rest of your life. Yeah. And well, let's, or, let's move on to okay, some other stuff. We've talked about school for a while, probably maybe too long. But, um, you know, we're a county that each district has a constable. Where, where, do you, where would your sheriff office stand in working with, or maybe not working in with uh, at all, with the constables that we have? The constables we have, I have already talked to all of them. Mm -hmm. I, don't, I don't know if you know what the actual purpose of a constable is, do you? Well, a hundred years ago, they were the actual law enforcement agents. Yeah, and, back in 1836. Yeah, I mean, you go back, you, you look at it, like you said, 1836. Mm -hmm. You couldn't have somebody that was in Morgan and was going to respond to a call in right. Peach Grove. It was going to take in 1836. <laughs> you know that was smoke signals, a covered wagon, and take them two days to get there or whatever. Uh, I might be exaggerating a little, right. but they had people in each area that were hired to monitor that area. Um, but that's that's kind of still an issue in rural counties, but not as great of an issue right. because it doesn't take us as long to get from Morgan to Peach Grove. It still takes us time. Absolutely, yeah. But, which is going to be a question I'll have later. Oh, yeah. Um, but at the same time, it, it's not like it was when it came out 150, 60, yeah. 70 years ago. I've already talked to all the constables. You know, the constables don't get paid anything. They're mm -hmm. volunteers. And I they think, do the job. I think they get paid if they serve papers, right? I don't and know who pays them, but I think exactly they get paid. That's exactly what I was going to bring up. I've talk to them. The damage we have, of course, not off the judge feels about this t t this morning. We have deputies out at nighttime, but they are also there to transport. Mm -hmm. That hurts me. I don't like that, but it is what it is. Uh -huh. So, so do you have a, a, a plan to solve that? At this point in time, no. Um, that's where, after all this, if I get elected, a lot of conversations are going to have to happen. But as far as that, I don't see that changing at this point in time. But the constables themselves, of course, they have to serve warrants, you know, mm -hmm. for deputies. So if the deputies can stay here, do what they got to do, the constables can serve these warrants. And they're going to get paid a little bit. Uh -huh. And I think they deserve to get paid a little bit if they're going to be out there doing things. Gotcha. So that takes the pressure off of the sheriff mm -hmm. and his deputies. Now, if it's, if it's a warrant, Explain to me what, what, what type of warrant you mean. Because well, you know, if it's a if it's a dangerous situation. You're gonna have one more. Okay, okay. Uh, yeah. There that's that's a given. Okay. But I mean you guys are not warrant. You're bus the crew you're going to get. Yeah. So yeah, you're gonna have one person. Well I think possibly you know by myself. Yeah, <laughs> it, but in these type of conversations I always don't like this suit. Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah. No. Here's the thing, I've been doing search and rescue, fire rescue, you know, really for years. And I've got a daughter now, and I told my daughter from the get-go, what I do is dangerous. But I'm not going to put myself into a situation to where I'm not going to come back home for that night. Gotcha. And I, I feel that way about anything. But for fire department, rescue department, police department, it doesn't make a difference to me. Well, we all have need to come home at night. And, and you know, and I made this comment before, too. I, I think we all owe a, a consistent, constant appreciation and thank you for those people who do that Absolutely. because every yeah. time you go out on a call every time a, a law enforcement agency starts their shift um, they are in a career that they don't know if they're coming home or not they're going to try uh, yeah. but they they don't know that I, I come here to write a story I'm pretty comfortable I'm coming home that night um, I, most of us in our life we don't have that and so we should be very appreciative of you all who do um, put themselves out there with that thought. So a big thank you on a little side note well, there. It, it's nothing to brag about. I never do. But the glory of being able to help people, that's that's why I've done it for over four years. I mean, I love it. I'm not, that's why, why I'm doing it now. I mean, the people in Dillon County need somebody to step up and take care of this issue. 
Let's talk about coverage and response time. Um, we've already talked about Morgan and Barry, right. and the response time was about a day and a half eight, in 1836 mm. <laughs> to go from one <laughs> section to the other. Um, it's much shorter than that now. Oh, yeah. But as you, what's your idea? What would be your rotation of officers uh, to provide coverage um, for Pendleton County? Well, like I said before, Pendleton County is limited on the amount of officers that they have. Um, I had people approach me and say, well, why don't you make at a county by a police department? Your family police mm -hmm. being, you know, working for the sheriff's department and everything worked together. Well, that would be great, but everybody on board would do something like that. <clears throat> and a lot of times, uh, they just want to stick to what they have. Could that happen in the future? Possibly. Mm -hmm. That would help the situation, what you're asking. But you can't take a deputy and say, I want you here in five minutes. Because number one, they ain't going to make it five minutes, and if they try to make it, they're going to get themselves hurt. Yeah. If a situation's happening out in Morgan, Barry, that officer needs to get there, but not put anybody's lives in jeopardy. That's not the job of a deputy, is to hurt anybody else or themselves. The response time, unless you get a helicopter to the sheriff's department, you want to <laughs> do that? I mean, I'd be glad to you know, train, but... But no, I mean, it is what it is. You're going to have to deal with what you got. And uh, can they go out and patrol more in these areas? I've heard people ask me that. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. They say, I'll never see a sheriff here. Well, I'll get you one there. You know, go knock on the doors. And That's just, also a good thing that they yeah. have. Because that <clears throat> means that they don't have the need to... Not necessarily, <laughs> not necessarily true. <laughs> because I know one door that I'm going to be knocking on. But, um, yeah, it's happening right there. Yeah. And like I said... If you're dealing, this is your one or other one, because I will be coming. But, yeah, I mean, it, that's a hard question to answer, because you don't want, I, I, I have a certain amount of people that I have. Mm -hmm. Where they're at in the county, um, I don't understand why we have a lot of state police making calls to our, our county through the day. I don't, I've never figured that one out yet. Well, I think it's just where they have a, I think there's two state police officers that yeah. Dry Ridge has assigned it. Penalty County, and I'm assuming it's not just Penalty County. It's not. No. Yeah. But, you know, <clears throat> I like to see us get more people. Until I get in, see my budget, see my funding, or what I can do, I really can't answer that. Gotcha. I wish I could. Yeah. But that's something in due time. But do I want more to be out there? Absolutely. Well, let me ask you this. I, I, I've asked <clears throat> this question. Um, do, would you be a proponent of, um, like you have multiple um, deputy sheriffs on at the same time, for both of them to be covering the entire county or have a primary <coughs> area, like it might be the northern part and then Falmouth and the southern part, uh, or are they just, they're cover, both of them are covering the entire county and they need to make their way through the county throughout the night? From what I've been told, from what I've seen, if they're out serving warrants, there's no warrants wherever they're at. Yeah. So therefore, if you take that away, then yeah, you're open to the possibility of being able to do that. Gotcha. But, and from what I was told, is up to the sheriff to pass that on to the constables. And I've asked them, they, they go for it. So that will ease that up. Now at that point in time, you still have two people. I'm not going to have one here and one here, and then something bad happened over here, and he's trying to get to them. Now, I'm not going to have them ride the same cruiser, yeah. but yeah, we're going to be within each other's distance. I want to make sure. So they may be going through the county as a pair, not driving not behind not each other, right. but they may be within five minutes of each other in northern, northeast Pendleton, then move over to northwest Pendleton. Is that what kind of what yeah. you're saying? Well, here's a situation, Keith, and it bothers me really bad, and people don't realize it, but Covington, Cincinnati, Areas like that where you have people say, don't well, drive down this road because mm -hmm. you ain't going to make it out. There are places in Pendleton County that that is the same situation. Now, it's not the tall buildings. It's the tall trees, but it's still that area. And I'm not, anybody, as we already said a minute ago, a deputy becomes a deputy to try to help people, or a police officer, anybody, to try to help people. My job as that sheriff is to make sure they make it home every night. Okay. I'm not going to put any of my deputies in a situation to where it's going to get bad. That's why the people that I have coming down, I've got two out of New York, one out of California, 
no ties with this community. Gotcha. People don't like that. Well, you know what? If you want to clean up, things have to happen. Mm -hmm. uh, it's been too long this way. This person take care of this part. I'm just leaving that alone. This is what we're doing. Gotcha. And well, and actually, uh, that kind of leads me to one of the things I wanted to do here at the end is just give you an opportunity to, to say um, what is that one thing from this that you want the voters of uh, Pendleton County to take away about you? Like I said at the beginning of this, <clears throat> I'm not a perfect person and I have done some things, but I've learned from my things and I took my, everything that I've been through in my life and applied it to what I do today. Do I regret what I have done? No. Because it's made me who I am today. I'm able to see things and understand what's going on where most people would never know. The education that I have behind me, the reason for that was actually for this. This is what I'm doing right now. And it's really helped me. I've got to meet people, got to bring people in that will do the job who get it done correctly. I have no problem with Todd Dean. He's a good man. I've got no problem with him. Eddie Quinn, I mean, I went to school with him. I don't remember him, but you know, he, you know, he seemed like he'd be a good guy too. Um, mm -hmm. But I started this to straighten Pendleton County up. I didn't know Eddie Quinn was going to run four years ago. Mm -hmm. But the thing about it is, whoever is going to do this position has got to, I mean, it's going to be hard. I mean, I, speaking under myself, it's going to be hard. You got to be willing to spend the long hours, be away from your family, to see situations in the county that you've known these people forever and they've been dealing drugs. You never knew that. It's, it's hard to be from this community, police the community, to see the friends, the people, the family, sisters, brothers, whatever, doing the things that they're doing and uh, have to rest. But you're going to have to do it. That's. I don't mind doing that. Like I said, I give my mom a ticket. <laughs> yeah. But you can put on the badge. You put on the badge for a reason. You don't give favors. You don't let things slide. You enforce the law because that is what the community has elected you to do. If I ever catch any of my officers ever let things slide, then I'm letting them slide. Gotcha. I will not deal with them. 